This is the first in a series of screencasts looking at how you can use Excel to create drag and drop activities. This is a technique that I've used a lot in my teaching and uh, in my training that I've done since being a teacher. And it might seem like an odd thing to do to use Excel for this, but there's actually some very good reasons for doing that. I don't tend to use Word because uh, with Word, when you start moving things around, things can sort of jump into different positions. You could use PowerPoint, but you have to be in the editing mode to better move things around. Um, which isn't always obvious for the people, whereas in Excel, things will just move around. And if I access this through the internet, and it opened it in an internet window, you wouldn't actually know that this was produced in Excel, because all you'd have is this clean white background uh, with these objects on it. Because um, you can see here, I've got rid of the grid lines, I've got rid of all the things that make it look Excel-y, uh, and what I've got is quite a clean, crisp-looking uh, teacher resource. So, in this case here, I've got a continuum, and I've got aerobic or anaerobic, and then I've got different sports. And the idea is, is that the learner has to just drag the sport and put it where they think it would fit onto the spectrum. Now, one of the reasons why I like continuums in particular is there isn't actually necessarily a right or wrong answer, which means it's actually a higher order thinking skill. Okay, if it was something where you had definitely right and wrong answers, then you can sometimes get it by guesswork or by simple deduction. Whereas here, you've actually got to think quite cleverly. Well, marathon runner, cross-country skier, which one is going to be the more aerobic? Okay, and I don't know the answer. Um, some, somebody out there probably does know the answer, but I don't. But I know that they're up at the top of the scale. But it makes me think about what I'm doing. Another reason why I like this particular example is I could print this out and it would work on a piece of paper. Or I could... Um, display it on the screen and we could do it as a class through the projector. Okay, It would work wonderfully on an interactive whiteboard because I can drag and drop it, the items on my finger, dead easy. But the other real attraction is it's very very quick to create. Okay, This takes me probably 10-15 minutes to create something like this. And it works with different things. Here I've got a continuum. Um, I've also done activities where I've got students to um, design classrooms to lay out teaching areas. So I've created a room and then I've created little objects like little boxes which represent furniture and they've got to drag them around to put them in right places. I've also done it with um, Venn diagrams where they've got to drop items into certain positions on the Venn diagram and put them in the right places. So the, the principles can be used in all sorts of different ways. You could use it for labelling a diagram where you have a diagram and then you've got to drag the labels into the right places. Uh, although there are other tools which will, will do that as well for you. So, um, other features of this is I've locked it so that I can't move the, the continuum, I can't edit the text, it comes up with a message if I try to. All I can do is move my, my boxes and I've done something clever with the boxes so that um, when I click on them I don't end up editing the text. Okay, again, that's a problem that some people have when they create these sorts of resources, is that when you start clicking on them, it allows you to edit the text. But I've managed to overcome that. And in the forthcoming series of screencasts, I will show you how to achieve a resource like this.